many people have questions regarding Salah and Salam. So many people have questions. So if I say the name of Rasulullah, so are you obligated to say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Is it compulsory? Will you be thrown into hell if you do not say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? So majority of the scholars, they said that it is mustahab to send Salah and Salam on Rasulullah And it is blameworthy if you don't mention it, but it is not obligatory. Okay. And uh, what we also know that hadith that we mentioned last time, that if a person, uh, if the name is mentioned and if a uh, person doesn't mention, then uh, Jibreel said that he will go to hell. And we also know the hadith that he's a miser who doesn't mention Salah and Salam. And may he, his, uh, may he be humiliated. What about those hadith? So that uh, scholar said that it, if somebody is like too lazy, and he doesn't pay attention to actually giving salah and salam and he thinks that it is not important then those ahadith will apply to him but now right now i am saying the name of rasulullah sallallahu so many times maybe somebody would just miss few times right does it mean that he will go to hell no it doesn't go that way it is important that you do it you pay attention and you do as much as possible but if you miss no problem inshallah you will not be punished there is no problem with it but if you keep on missing not even saying once it is definitely blameworthy and if you are really not paying heed then it is really serious problems then those uh, the, the the warnings will apply to you how how loud should i say so if i say rasulullah should i sh should you say sallallahu alaihi wasallam so that everybody should hear or should you say to yourself so the recommendation to say or reply it will be sufficient if you just say to yourself that will be me but if you say a little louder like you and other person hears that is also okay that is fine it doesn't have to be said aloud it will it is fine if you say in within yourself and other things that scholars mention that many people use this abbreviation like if you've seen it many times probably PBUH SAW it basically stands for peace be upon him so whenever they write the name of Muhammad for example they write peace be upon him they don't write the whole thing peace and blessings be upon him or sallallahu alaihi wasallam they don't write it is it okay to do such kind of thing when we are writing the scholars mentioned this uh, and address this upon uh, among them were uh, Shaykh ibn Abbas and also Imam Suyuti they said that this should not be done this should not be done and they said that whenever we do something we should be doing that that thing with ihsan with perfection as much as possible that is the quality of a muslim right so do not try to steal away that thing even the people like if you are in a hurry like in the olden days when people used to listen to lectures they would write it down and whenever they listen the name of muhammad and they would write muhammad they would leave a space in their books and they would continue and they go home and they fill it up and write sallallahu alaihi wasallam I mean, they just have to think that, just imagine, just, just remember one thing when it comes to this. We heard that hadith that Rasulullah used to pray for us after every single salah, after single prayer that he used to offer. He used to take so much time for us and we do not have time just to write Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Just imagine that. So this is something not, not appropriate, that we should write the whole thing. All these abbreviations, it, it really has no place. Even people write the 786 as a shortcut for Bismillah rahman rahim That's a very serious thing. You shouldn't be doing that. Uh, write the whole thing, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And actually, if you notice here what I have here, you see this mark? This is a, if, if, you are, you, if you use computer a lot, this is a shortcut that you can have even in Microsoft Word or anything. This is like one character. It's a unique, Unicode character, if you know. Uh, you just press one button, it will automatically come. So it, it's, it's good. If you have computers, you can set it up. And if you're writing notes or writing letters, and if you encounter the name Muhammad, so you just press this one key. It's easy for you, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But it is from the uh, Ihsan that you have somewhere. Don't use PBUH. Right. And also, can we say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for like other prophets like Musa Alayhi Salam or any prophet? Is it okay? Usually when we mention the prophet we say Alayhi Salam, right? 
on, on, upon him be peace. Can we say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? It is okay, no problem. There is no problem. Usually we use it for uh, Prophet uh, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but it is okay for other Prophets as well. And other issue is, this is very common habit among many people. If you hear uh, this brother is going to Makkah or Medina, what do people tell him? Brother, you are going to the grave of Rasulullah Sallallahu So send my salam, give my salam, just convey my salam to him. Tell him that I am sending salam. Is it okay to do that? It's very common habit in many places. The scholars said that this should not be done. This should not be done because now you are, uh, you are giving that job to a human to send your salam. But there is a better person to take care of that salam, right? There is an angel assigned to, to take care of your salam and make sure that it reaches Rasulullah Sallallahu So angels are more trustworthy and they are the best in doing job than the humans. If you are sending salam through different people, it basically means that angels are not sending and you rely that human on human more than uh, the angels. And, and also, we know for a fact that our salam reaches him no matter where we are. So, it is better, it, it actually this should never be said to people to send salam on the travelers or whoever it is. Angels are definitely better in doing this job. And can we change the wordings of this dhikr? So, if... We have, I will mention the different ahadith, what, all, what different variations we have. So can we come up with our own salah and salam? The scholar said that you should not change the wordings. So this is a dhikr, right? This is a dhikr and dhikr is tawfiqi. It, sh it should be done the way it is prescribed. Okay, You cannot change it. And uh, actually there's a, this, this incident where uh, Imam Suyuti, so when he grew old, actually, what happened? He used to send blessings upon uh, Rasulullah Sallallahu and he would say or add something more to it, more to that uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So what happened one time? He saw a dream. In that dream, he said that, I was told that, are you more knowledgeable of the meaning of words and more eloquent than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Are you more eloquent? If there was not some extra meaning in the version spoken by the Prophet, he would have not preferred that over you. So, so, I asked, so he said, I asked Allah's forgiveness and, he, and I stopped using the extra versions that I have. So whatever we have, we should follow it. Maybe we'll find a better word or something, but know that whatever uh, Rasulullah taught us has more blessings. And adding something to it and decreasing something to it, it's not, it's, it's not a good thing. Because what was the best, Rasulullah taught us. And also one time what happened? There was this uh, Sahabi, Al-Bara ibn Azib, radiallahu anhu. Rasulullah sallallahu was teaching him a dua. Probably there was a dua of uh, sleep, a dua at night, I don't remember. But in that dua, there was this word called uh, Nabiyika, right? There was this word Nabiyika. So when he was reciting it back to Rasulullah sallallahu Instead of saying Nabiika, he said Rasulika. Right? It has almost the same meaning, right? But Rasulullah said that don't do that. What I am saying, do exactly the same. Do not change even a single word, even if it means the same thing. So same thing with uh, Salatu Salam. We have five, six different variations. We'll go over him. Which one? Before you sleep. Yeah. Now I remember. The Shaykh is saying it was a dua before sleep. So. That was the thing that was said, do not change the way. All the dhikr that we learn, also the brother Bajur that he teaches us from the Hisnul Muslim, keep it as is, word for word. When you follow the Prophet Wasallam, there is some special blessing attached to it. You think that one word can increase the blessings, but no, it, might, it will decrease probably, because that thing is embedded in that wording, that phrase. So don't change it. And also, many people, we have this unfortunately in many countries, they have this habit of reciting Salah and Salam together, probably after maybe like Juma prayer or something. They say, brother, it's a good thing, let's do it. Yeah, even at homes people do it, they do it together. Every Everybody is doing together. 
and it looks good you know if there was something good in it we will definitely do it it sounds really good i mean i would be the first one to do that but the problem with it is that it comes now under the category of worship and whenever you do something you have to have proof and remember what i said last time when rasulullah is giving that water from that house the kawthar the pool there is one category of people who will not be given water. Who are those people? Bidara, Bidara, the Mukta, the people. Uh, remember, you know, some, some people might be actually not given the, the, the water because probably Rasulullah said that you used to send so much salah and salam upon me, but I'm still not giving you water. Why? Because you were doing it in the way other than what I taught. So you see now, even though you loved him so much, you send so much salah and salam upon him, but now you are doing it in a way which was not taught to us. So you are risking so much. You know, that's, I, I really pity on the people who are involved in Bidah. SubhanAllah, they have so much good intention, but they just slip a little. But Rasulullah SAW said that it is such a serious matter, don't take it lightly. Do exactly what I am saying and see my what uh, Sahaba are doing, follow them. If they did in congregation, we will do all in congregation. But they understood the religion so well, none of them did it. And people later on started it. So we have to be very careful. This bidah is a very, very serious topic. You know, some people go you know, all out saying everything is bidah, this and that. But we ask scholars what exactly is bidah. Right? And they will explain to us. It's a good thing to do congregation. But you know, all the problem with it is it falls under the category of bidah. We will do the way Rasulullah taught us.